You're not from around here, are you? Well, no, no, we're not. What brings you to Cornwall? Well, I'll tell you two reasons we were exploring Cornwall. First, this fangirl had to visit the location where one of her favorite TV shows was filmed. And second, my hubby wanted to revisit the place where he spent many a happy summer in his childhood. So come along with us as we explore the villages of Port Isaac and Varian, Cornwall. There really isn't parking in Port Isaac, so you must park in the car park at the top of the hill leading into town. Then you can either make the somewhat long and steep walk into town on foot, or you can take the piss. Yes, this is a real sign near the parking lot and an excellent example of British humor. So you know the joke, Doc Martin fans, about how it never rains in Port Wen? Because the show, it's always clear, beautiful, sunny skies, never rainy. And it's Cornwall, so, you know, that's a little unbelievable. Well, we've had fantastic luck with the weather on our trip, but wouldn't you know it, today, when I'm headed into Port Isaac to see the land of Doc Martin, it's been raining. At the moment, it's not really rainy, but I have a feeling by the time I get down into the village, it will be. So I'm filming this intro now. Let's go see if we can find some Doc Martin stuff. Speaking of clever names, I thought this pizza place at the top of the hill had a really great name. Okay, I think this is Louisa's school behind me. Yep, that was the side entrance to Louisa's school, and this is the very popular front entrance. This is how the famous port looked when I was there at low tide. I wished that I'd been able to see it at high tide as well. From across the harbor, I could see the destination I most wanted to visit, the docks surgery. At the time, I hadn't watched the movie Fisherman's Friends, but having just watched it last night, I discovered that the home in that film was also nearby. After taking a brief moment to smirk at the public conveniences sign, this is something I talk about in my funny random British bits video, I started up the lane to the surgery. It was fun walking this path because it's one so frequently seen in the show as the doc dashes down the hill at full speed to help a patient in distress. And yes, once I got to the surgery, I had to be a stereotypical American YouTuber and take a selfie from a couple different angles just to see which one turned out the best. I'm not sure all the residents of Port Isaac welcome the throngs of tourists clogging the streets and hanging out by the water eating their lunch. I'm sure some of them want to handle us like the doc handles Buddy the dog and say, Go away! Disgusting! If you read this sign prominently posted in the middle of town, it's obvious that the tourist council is trying their level best in a most polite British way to tell us obnoxious tourists to value Port Isaac for being more than just the set of a TV show. I wished that I had more time when I visited Port Isaac, as I would have loved to have learned more about its maritime history and culture. I did enjoy looking at this prospect of the village, as it gave a good sense of the buildings in Port Isaac, all perched on the hillside with their great views of the port. And as I did throughout my trip to coastal towns of the West Country, I loved finding cool cottage doors like this one. And when they have charming names and matching door knockers, all the better. Like we saw in other seaside towns, there were lovely homes covered in various pastel shades of render. And of course, this house caught my eye because the address plate made me feel like I'd just discovered another nod to Doc Martin in the village. Although, as I stood there snapping my photos for Instagram and YouTube, I did worry a wee bit that the homeowner might appear out of nowhere and shout at me, Oh no, no, no! I would have loved to have bumped into Louisa on this little street and have a natter. I actually have a lot of questions for her. It was a Doc Martin miracle. I was here in Port Isaac, the real life town that it's fictionalized as Port Wen. There's the harbor down below. Here's some wonderful Cornish cottages behind me. 
and I was able to go explore the village the whole time without getting rained on. That was a little miracle. Next up is our visit to the village of Varian. While it can be vexing to run into farm traffic on the little roads one is traversing, it also can be rather delightful if you're not in a rush. Not just a person on horseback in our road, it's also a person on horseback towing another horse. We are in the village of Varian, Cornwall right now, and we're here because this is a place where Ian used to come every summer and stay with his grandparents. Varian is a very small village, but one of the things it's known for are roundhouses, like this one here. These round houses with the crosses on top were built by the rector who wanted families to be able to live in these houses that were round with no corners because that meant there was no corners for the devil to hide in. They're just lovely houses. There are also some wonderful thatched houses in this village. We're in Varian, where my grandparents lived in the 70s, and I used to visit them here and uh, loved it here, loved going to visit the areas around here and uh, go to the beaches and the coast. And I have a lot of happy memories from my time in this uh, beautiful locale. We're standing in front of this house because you can see it's a traditionally fat thatched home, and they're adding new thatch to a section that is older. There's another beautiful traditional thatched cottage. And of course, I had to attempt my trademark photo with magenta flowers whilst I was visiting the village of Varian. So here we are at Barn Cottage where I would spend a lot of my summers in the 1970s when I was growing up here where my grandparents lived. And my grandmother Erica was a potter and you can see there's a, a low roofed um, section which is just next to the main house and that's where she had her uh, pottery room where she had her kiln and, and her wheel and she would make her pottery. So over here was the back garden and this is where my cousins and I would play clock golf. Clock golf was where you had um, Roman numerals that were placed in different places and then you would have a hole that you would shoot to from the different Roman numerals. So Barn Cottage was a tithe barn. It's at least 500 years old. And um, the section to the right here is the original ancient section. And then the rendered section on the left, that's newer, that was added probably in the 1800s. Um, but this also used to be the old rectory for the parish church and then the um, rector wanted something nicer and more fancy and so up further up the hill he built a new rectory. This building was across from Barn Cottage and if I remember correctly this may have been homes for fishermen's widows that were lost at sea but I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure. So it looks like a couple houses and then round houses in between them joining them. A bunch of separate flats because they have numbers on them. After visiting Barn Cottage and Home Yard Homes across the street, we walk down the road in search of a glimpse of the fancy big rectory on the hill. And on our way we encountered this lodge house and we're lucky enough for the owner of the lodge to come out and explain a bit about its history. Um, this was a, originally a barn, but in 1832, it was turned into a lodge. And the vicar, Trist, um, stole from Grand Pound uh, some windows from a church which collapsed because of the, it was a rotten borough. Okay, I'm going to interrupt this interesting story to do a bit of recapping and translating. The vicar in Varian was named Trist, and he stole from a neighboring parish called Grampound because this was before the Reform Act of 1832 abolished so-called rotten boroughs. These were small parliamentary towns that had very few citizens, but a wealthy patron who would gain unrepresentative influence in the House of Commons 
and influence laws for their own personal gain. Think of George Warleggen in Poldark as an example, if you're familiar with that story. And that window up there, which is the thing you need to take, is 1385, and it was from the old church. Well, I was going to say, those are awfully lovely windows for a barn. <laughs> yeah. well, if we sell this place and demolish it, we have to return it to the window, we have to return to the Bishop of Exeter. <laughs> that is a crazy story. So this, this house is called the Old Lodge, which meant it was a lodge house to the vicarage? It was called originally the vicarage lodge. And then for my American viewers, explain what a lodge is. A lodge is where a servant lived at the beginning, usually the beginning of the drive, who checked people in, mm -hmm. helped them in, opened the gate. So a little bit of a gatehouse as well. Gate gatekeeper, gatekeeper, but a, a bit more than that. And this is the old vicarage from 1832, which is a very grand house for a rather wealthy vicar who lived here and his family pretty much owned the village. Cornish village churches are wonderful, and the Varian Parish Church is no exception. I love it when churches have a gate that opens like this one to the pathway leading up to the church entrance. The church wasn't open to go inside the day we were there, but we still enjoyed our brief visit. The church has been located here in Varian since Norman times, and features 13th century doorway arches and tower windows and 14th century pillars. In the churchyard are headstones from the Trist family and many other noteworthy graves, intermingled with beautiful foliage all around the church. Here are a few more interesting spots I found in this pretty village. There is the new inn, the village pub, which despite its name is not actually that new. It was originally two cottages and then was converted to an inn. It's been around since the 16th century. Maybe compared to the 13th century church across the street, it's considered new. Anyway, today it is a well-kept and highly reviewed pub and inn. And then there's Granny's Attic, a gift shop that sells gifts and sweets. Can anyone explain to me what this big rope thing is on the side of the building? As we look around this sweet little park in Varian, let me remind you to please like this video and please leave a comment. But when you do, don't forget. Can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Thanks for watching and do something good in the world today. <laughs>